OK, so we know that if I had y equals 3x to the 4 minus 5x plus 2, for example, then I could differentiate that to find dy by dx is equal to 12x cubed minus 5. OK, so that's the process that we've learnt going through differentiation. So that if we have y equals, um, let's say, a times x to the n, then when I differentiate, the power comes down to the front and I take 1 from the power. OK? So, how do I reverse the process? That's the question. If I was just given dy by dx, can I get back to y? That's what we want to learn here. And this is the process that we would refer to as integration. This process of getting from dy by dx equals back to y equals. This is a differential equation. Okay, so let's have a look. We know that the 12x cubed has got to get to 3x to the 4, and we know that the minus 5 has got to get to back to minus 5x. Okay, so what's happening? Well, I can see that the power has got to increase. Okay, the power has got to increase for me to get from dy by dx back to y. Okay, so let's say. I have my dy by dx, and it's this time is ax to the n. How can I get to y? Well, the power's got to increase. We know that that's got to happen. So we can add 1 to the power. However, that's not all that happens, because this isn't 12x to the 4 when I move up. What's happening? Well, the 12... Uh, was multi had well the three was multiplied by the four to get to twelve. So in order to get back to three, I'm going to have to divide by four. So really, I need to divide by this new power that I've got. So I need to be dividing by that new power, the n plus one. Let if we see it happen here, right? If I've got the dy by dx equals a n x to the n minus 1, then if I add 1 to the power, I get n minus 1 plus 1, which is just n. I divide by n. The n's there will cancel, and I'll be left with the ax to the n that I started with. OK? So I can clearly see that that is the process I have to go through. I'm going to have to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power to reverse the process. However, there's an elephant in the room because there's this problem, this plus 2. How am I going to deal with that? Because if I'm starting with dy by dx equals 12x cubed minus 5, and I want to get back to this, there's nothing that tells me that that plus 2 was there. It could have been plus 200 for all I know. So when you differentiate, information gets lost. That plus 2, that bit of information there, disappears. And there's no way to retrieve it unless I have some other bit of information told to me. So when I integrate um, something like 12x cubed minus 5, I can get to the 3x to the 4 minus 5x. And I know that I can get to minus 5x, because minus 5x differentiates to minus 5. So minus 5 has got to integrate to minus 5x. But it's that plus 2. Okay? So when I start with dy by dx equals ax to the n, I add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, yes. But I must have something else added on. And I'm going to use a plus c to represent this number that may be there. It might be zero. It might be minus a billion. You don't know. This is what we refer to 
as the constant of integration. So, if I didn't know what the original curve was, and I started out with the gradient function, then what I need to do is I need to add 1 to the power. So I add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Now, you can use the same rule here with the minus 5 if you like. You've just got to imagine that the minus 5 is minus 5x to the 0. Because then you can think, well, I add 1 to the power, I get minus 5x to the 1 divided by 1. OK? But hopefully you should be able to spot, well, minus 5 must integrate to minus 5x. Like 8 would integrate to 8x, and a million would integrate to a million x. OK? But there's also that plus c constant of integration. Because I don't know, I didn't know that, I don't know that it was a 2 that was on the end. I don't have that information. Now, obviously, that can be simplified to the 3x to the 4 minus 5x plus c. So this is how we can integrate something of the form ax to the n, OK? Starting from dy by dx. Now, that's not the only notation that we use. We also use a notation that looks like this. OK, now these two pieces here are like bookends, OK? They are there and have to be there, both of them. You can't just start ignoring the dx, for example, OK? And what they have is they're saying, I want to integrate what is inside between the two bookends with respect to x. This bit is saying with respect to to the variable x. So it tells you the variable. Now, that's actually more important than you may think it is. Because when you get on to multivariable calculus, where you've got x's, y's, z's, and all sorts going on, when you get to higher level mathematics, then you clearly need to be told which is the variable that you're integrating with respect to. OK? So it all starts here. So this is an integral symbol. And I'm integrating this with respect to x. OK? This is the notation that we can use. And if you've watched the previous video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, you'll, you'll recognise this notation. So we add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and don't forget your constant of integration, c, on the end. OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through several videos making sure we are well versed in this.